should be doing the countdown soon. Why not? Oh, no, we are live. It just didn't do the countdown. <laughs> this is what happens when you put somebody who doesn't know what she's doing in charge. <laughs> and we are back. Super sorry about <laughs> us being very confused there for a second. Uh, for our talk right now, we have Jared Creasy, who is the Senior Community Manager at Tripwire Interactive. And his topic is putting a stop to toxicity. It's just good business. The floor is now yours, Jared. Hello, everyone, and uh, thank you for introducing me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we'll figure this out eventually. We'll get there. Uh, it's like any one of our normal uh, trip our live streams where something always goes wrong right at the beginning. So talk is toxicity. It's just bad for business. The benefits of having a community team, moderation, and tools to help you out. So first question might be, who is Tripwire? Well. Come on, there we go. We're a developer and publisher. We have over 100 employees. We're known for Killing Floor, Red Orchestra, Maneater, Chivalry 2. And we've started as a developer and we've added third party publishing to get the, to show other developers the kind of publishing deals we wanted when we were new. So that's us in a nutshell. Ta da! Look at those awesome games. Are you planning for community success? That's an important question because gaming communities are made up of many different subgroups and individuals who want to have a good time probably playing your game. And 89% of those people are playing games to relieve stress. So. You want to make sure they have a good time in and out of your game. This particular fact was brought to you by the ESA's Essential Facts 2022. So community interactions happen both inside and outside of the game, and you want to foster those interactions. Um, with close to 10,000 games releasing on Steam this year alone, it's not even done yet. We're a little bit past the halfway point. Uh, you want to make sure you're doing everything you can to catch player attention and keep it. Toxicity and its impacts. So, six out of ten players have said they've had at least once quit a session or match because they were subjected to hate and harassment. Once again, six out of ten players have reported that they have at least once chosen not to spend money on a game because of the community. Seven out of 10 players have reported avoiding playing certain games because of the reputation of the community. Uh, and this slide and several others is using takethis.org research. So these are great tools for any community managers out there. I just want to highlight. And you might be surprised at uh, the impact this toxicity has uh, in ways that you aren't even expecting. Um, for example, younger players are more likely to try and take action against the toxicity, be that reporting it, raising awareness, um, while male players are more likely to actually react to that toxicity, as in leaving the game or how they choose to spend their money. And speaking about the money, what if it really was all about the Benjamins? Because recent research has found the average monthly amount of money spent on games deemed as non-toxic versus toxic was a difference of 54%. That's, that's kind of a big number. And anybody in the game business, especially those running indie games, knows that every dollar counts on making sure you continue, continue to support your game as well as looking into your future and what game you're going to be making next. So a little bit about me and my awesome team. So I'm the community team lead, Jared Creasy. 
Uh, you can see here the awesome Mia and the awesome Lori, who work as community manager and player support under me. And then under that, we have our awesome volunteer moderators across our plethora of titles, as well as our support portal knowledge base and wiki, which is done in part with the wiki, at least, is done in uh, support of our community, uh, hosted by us, run by our communities. Uh, and the support portal and knowledge bases are run by us and the awesome Lori. So if you're thinking about having putting together your own team awesome for your own games, this isn't a bad place to start. And it scales well because you can add more people as needed onto these branches. You can start with one and then grow because it can get busy quite quickly. So let's talk about what you should do to combat toxicity. And we've got a few hard rules of do's and do not. Uh, and let's start with the do nots. So never stop players from expressing their opinion. I'll, I'll return to touch on this again, but don't stop players from telling you what they think about their game, your game. Um, don't allow toxicity to fester, be it an individual or a group of people. Uh, make sure you document, warn, and action as quickly as possible. Some offenses are especially heinous, and they warrant an immediate removal from the community, and you should action those as quickly as possible. The longer you allow toxicity to fester, the harder it becomes to deal with. Don't be afraid to say you aren't equipped to answer something or to have a particular type of interaction or apologize if you get something wrong. Players love when teams are upfront with them. They love the openness. Uh, what they don't like are vague, are too many vague non-statements uh, and they will start to call you out on that. And as an especial no-no, don't let known long time and even sometimes helpful community members get away with breaking the rules. You have to enforce your rule set equally to everybody uh, in your community. Otherwise you're setting a standard that is going to become more and more problematic the longer it goes on. Now let's touch on the do's. Do moderate how players express their opinions. So do let them express it, but don't let them break rules in expressing their opinions. And you have to be clear about that. Have a clear set of rules that you keep up to date and you'll probably you know, need to update it every once in a while. And you'll have some catch all statements in there. I know our rules do. And you will continue to uh, tweak it and improve it as time goes on, as you run into new situations and community interactions continue to evolve. Uh, as we touched on, you have to be even when applying the rules across the community. You cannot let certain groups or certain individuals get away with things uh, that you don't allow others to do. You need to treat everyone with respect while maintaining professionalism. Um, it's easy to become friendly with members of your community and you should you know have that olive branch open and be as friendly as you are able to be but you have to remember at some point you might need to take action against these people and you need to keep that level of professionalism involved so that comes to setting and maintaining those boundaries and always feel free to step away from an interaction Find someone or someones you can get an outside opinion of, uh, off of, and they may be inside your organization. They may not be. They may be a best friend. They may be a fellow community manager at a different organization. Uh, feel free to open up a chat with them and say, hey, I'm thinking about sending a message like this uh, and wait for them to come back and tell you, yeah, that's okay, or no. Well, I understand where you're coming from. That is not the right message. Try something else. So now that we've talked a little bit about moderation, 
let's talk about the various places you'll be and the tools you'll need. So there's your what we call your controlled social spaces, your discords, your official forums, Steam discussions, and more. Uh, things of note, players love Discord for its instant communication and back and forth between players and devs and their fellow players. Um, but did you know it's a terrible place for long-form discussion and knowledge retention? They are improving on that front. But it's it's not the perfect form of all communication. And I there there's some give and take there. Some studios have moved away from forums and gone all in on Discord. Uh, others are keeping their options open. I personally profess on um, the side of keeping your options open and just trying to engage your community in all of the places that you can. Uh, and as part of that, you should find ways to reward those who join your spaces and become a part of your core community because they make it easier for you to understand what your wider player base is thinking, what potential problems are, what's working, uh, what needs massaging. Uh, and they're a great kind of first look at how things are happening uh, before things potentially go further south. There's also your third party social spaces, uh, things like your Reddit. Uh, and I'm, by this, I'm meaning like a community run Reddit versus a uh, own team run Reddit. Uh, X, formerly known as Twitter, uh, your Facebooks, your YouTube responses, Twitch, and more. So as mentioned earlier, you always want to try and meet your players where they are, and you might be surprised where you find them. Uh, we often find, for example, our PC community uh, is located in our forums, be it our own and Steam, as well as Discord. And we found that a lot of our console players only interact with us via Twitter. So it's something that you need to be aware of that your players might not all be in the same place and you might need to go and find them and figure out what conversations are taking place there because just one space is not always reflective of the conversations happening in the other spaces. And now for what is probably the biggest one and one that's constantly changing and evolving in game. So you need to be able to monitor what's happening, especially if you're having a multiplayer game you need to be able to monitor and receive actionable reports, actionable reports from players about text and voice interactions they're having. Uh, and that's just not having a report button. You need to have a report button that gives you the information you need to do something about it. Uh, because otherwise, you're just making more noise uh, that your team's going to get bogged down on. Uh, do you, does your game have restrictions about who they want to play with? Uh, do content creators have options to set restrictions as well? Because they tend to draw bad actors who will try and negatively impact their experience. And those content creators can be an awesome positive impact on your community. So you want to make sure that you've thought about these things, if not prior to your launch, uh, shortly afterwards and see how you can get these tools in place to help your community continue to grow and thrive. Does your game have an anti-cheat? Once again, this is mostly multiplayer focused. Is it set up properly? Do you understand its limitations? Not all anti-cheats are the same. Not all of them work the same. Uh, not, no anti-cheat, to my knowledge, does everything. Some things are more on the developer side to add protections and keep things from happening, while other things are more on the anti-cheat side. And it's important to know how your game works and how your anti-cheat works. And finally, do you have the tools to moderate and limit access to chat and voice uh, and even online play as needed? So you always want to make sure that you don't necessarily, you have the right tools in various levels of tools because don't get me wrong, there are players out there with bad intentions. And once again, sometimes they need to go. And we'll talk more on that in a little bit. But other times, some players just need a light warning or two. And they are perfectly fine. People have bad days. People have bad experiences. They get frustrated. They act out. So when this happens, you want to make sure you have the right tools to be able to action this. 
So recognizing toxicity, the easy, the hard, and it's just a joke, man. So let's start with the easy ragers. These can be cheaters. These can be people in chat that their goal is to make other people upset. Uh, they tend to be few in number, but they have an outsized impact in a short amount of time in both game and community spaces. Uh, and once again, it can be via gameplay. They can be cheaters. They could be just toxic in chat. Uh, but their their goal and their fun is making other people have no fun. So luckily, they are tend to be easier to spot, but these are the type of people that you need to get rid of immediately. Uh, do not pass go. Do not collect $200 you're gone. Now, the harder personality conflicts, especially as you have a growing community, you will run into this. It's it's unavoidable. Uh, they have different mindsets, different cultural values, different regional tolerances, and it's not easy. Uh, this is something that you're going to run into almost constantly. Uh, and this is where it helps to have clearly defined rules to set some limitations, set some boundaries for where you know your players might have more friction in their interactions. Uh, you might have to, you know, ha pull members of your community aside and say, hey, just put them on mute. Don't talk to them. And it's hard because sometimes they don't do that and then they get more frustrated and they act out. And then finally, uh, it's just a joke, also known as Schrodinger's douchebag. Uh, joking like statements that are often personal attacks aimed at devs or even other members of the community. Uh, and they can often come off as innocuous or innocent at first, but they often aren't. And once they're seen as accepted, they start to pile up fast and quickly, and they will change the tone of community discourse. And you will notice that, and you will see that things have started to change. So we talked about setting the ground rules. So here's here's some basics, and this is not an end all, but this is a good place to start from or things to consider. You know, disruptive behavior is not tolerated. Treat everyone equally and with respect. No prone to heated argument, argument topics. And that might change for your particular game or your particular community. Uh, but, you know, things like religion, things like politics. If you have rules about, you know, what you get into with your family, this might be a good place to also say, hey, we don't do that in our community. There are other places for those conversations. They aren't in our spaces. Uh, be mindful of what channels and subforum sections you have uh, and how they're being used. So if you have a section set up for memes, make sure that the people going in there are posting memes and they are posting ones that are acceptable to your community. Uh, and make sure they're not spam posting in other places. Players want their channels to be well-defined so they can quickly find the conversations uh, and information that they're seeking out. You know, you obviously don't want spam posters, uh, either it being information, uh, true or not, or invites to other places, no begging for free games, keys, gifts, playtest invites. Uh, avoid unnecessary tagging, and that goes true for the developers and the community team too. Uh, often consider setting up different types of ways especially with discord we use our news opt-in group for people who want to get all of our pings and we reserve the everyone pings for just big events like hey guys we're shipping an update this is what's in it no not safe for work no cheats exploits or illegal contact content and as always the final verdict is subject to staff discretion so while talking about how you want to interact with people, and this goes from a community management standpoint, a support standpoint, or just, it, it's, it's got a wide a range of usage. Uh, what we tend to use is called the blast technique, uh, or we've kind of 
shortened it to the BLT technique. Uh, believe when your players tell you something. Listen to what they have to say and thank them for their input and contributions. Uh, now, this is, as I said, the full technique is called BLAST, and that is for apologize and satisfy. Uh, and that can come into play, especially uh, on a support end uh, when things go wrong. So you want to make sure that when things go wrong, you are up front, you apologize about it, and you're working to fix it. Try and de-escalate. Frustrated fans can often come off as over the top when they don't intend to be. These can be some of your best people, some of your strongest community members. And as I mentioned before, they can have a bad day. They can have a bad week. It could be something that happened in your community. It could be something that happened in their personal life and you have no knowledge over. But learning how to de-escalate de these situations uh, is something you want to make sure anybody who is working in a community-facing position is prepared for and ready to do. And when something's happening, take that extra moment before you jump in and consider how you're going to approach the situation. Are you calm? Do you actually understand the problem as it's happening? And consider the platform you're on and its limitations. There are ways that, to, to put that in perspective, I often fall into the problem of typing in Discord and instead of writing one giant paragraph, I'll split it up into multiple sentences. In doing so, you leave yourself open to potential bad actors taking a portion of what you say and trying to turn it into something else. So that's what I mean when I say consider the platform, consider how you're having some of these interactions. So de-escalation. Acknowledge that somebody is having an issue because they are. Acknowledge that they feel terrible, upset, angry, any number of things. Reflect words back at them. Like you understand that they are angry. Like let them know, like use the specific words they're using. Make them understand that you truly aren't just, you know, going through a script. When somebody's super upset, you likely aren't going to convince them. They're upset. Their, their method of rationale is impaired when they're upset. So don't focus on convincing them. Just explain to them what is happening and what steps are being taken. Agree that you're working for the betterment of everyone's interest and try and make sure that all parties are aware of that. Once again, when people are upset, when people are angry, it doesn't go away immediately. There will be time and you will need to give it to yourself. You'll need to give it to your community. And remember those community guidelines and boundaries. Like the, these are your anchor uh, in any sort of de-escalation. And there might be times where you're like, hey, I need to give you a timeout. You can come back, but for now, it's doing you no good to be here. And then always distract or give players a way out of a situation. Um, try, I mean, it's not always going to work. Uh, sometimes it can fail. But try and, you know, if the situation is evolving in a good way, try and redirect that energy uh, and get things back to a better place for them. And as a part, a better place for everybody in the community. So when to say bye, bye, bye. Some people just don't want to be reasoned with ever. They're just here for an argument. So you need to know when to walk and when to run away from a situation Leaving a link behind to any official messaging on the topic could be the rules. It could be a, hey, guys, this is the thing you need to know about. Obviously, we're not having a conversation, so I'm just leaving this here. Uh, 
but perhaps they can find what they need behind the room, the door to room 12A for those of you who are Mate Python fans. Uh, you'll often find that a lot of these people uh, result in a storm in a teacup situation where the same group of people are involved in multiple conversations about the same subject. Um, and they, they can spam up and fill up your conversational spaces. And it can look like that is the only topic being discussed. Like, uh, let's use the Steam discussions when it's not. But they've somehow got 20 threads on this going, and it's eating up the first two pages of your Steam discussion. Consider merging those threads together and putting those people. Don't stop them from having their conversation always, once again. but focus it into one place. So you can see the forest through the trees. Is this actually, you know, everybody involved or is this five people? These are two very different situations. You know, start with a warning, have a talk with somebody, have a temp ban if it's warranted, but sometimes that doesn't get the message across. At some point you have to say, hey, you are not a healthy part of our community. And sorry, you have to go. Sometimes a ban needs to be permanent. Any abhorrent abuse of others should lead to an immediate permanent ban and getting them out of your community spaces. Keep an eye on your documented actors. Many of them, as I said, after a warning or two, some after a temp ban, they get it. They understand. Some of them play by the rules just long enough, hoping that you've forgotten. And then they return to their old ways. The harder ones will read your rules and try and find exactly where that line is. So the little adage we use is sometimes you need to go after the mob for tax evasion because they often leave themselves open to action uh, in some way. You just have to be paying attention. So to help out with that, you might need some awesome moderators to help you out. And we at Tripwire and Tripwire Presents are actively you know, running several multiplayer games at any given point. Right now, it's Killing Floor 2. It's Rising Storm 2 Vietnam. It's Deceive Inc. Uh, we're helping out with Chivalry 2. And you saw our team. We're, we're three people. But what we do have are some awesome, trusted moderators who are amazing in their own right. And it is actually work involved to find the right moderators for you. You can put the wrong people in place, uh, and that can have detrimental effect. You need to not be afraid to remove moderators uh, if a situation warrants it. So where can you find some other some awesome moderators? Uh, a lot of them are already moderating in other spaces, uh, potentially uh, another friendly studios game. Uh, they're commonly community advocates or contributors to discussions. Uh, ask any existing moderators, do you know somebody that you think would be a good fit? And sometimes those social spaces have their own moderators uh, to help out, but you can't just rely on them on places like Steam and Discord. Uh, and strongly consider having an, a, a moderator application, uh, asking important questions. Have you done this before? Are, are you prepared for what this entails? Uh, because there's a lot that goes into moderating a video game space, and you want to make sure that you keep it a positive experience for anybody who is volunteering for you. So you need to consider things like personality. When are they active? Uh, what experiences do they have? Do they understand the rules extremely well? Do they understand the emotional toll? Uh, and you need, on the flip side, need to respect their time. You need to give them a heads up on things. Uh, you can't just spring things on them. Check in on them, have a conversation, see how they're doing, be open to their feedback, show your appreciation, give them a new game, give them that new DLC. 
I mean, they're helping you out, make it worth their time and effort with a little bit of love that costs your company very little. Have some clear expectations and guides for them. So don't just throw them off into the deep end. Give them guides to work off of. And in the wonderful new world that we live in today, there's a lot of bots out there. There's bots on Discord. There's bots that troll Reddit. There's bots on Twitch and YouTube. And there's also some amazing new sentiment tools that can also look at a lot of these places, including Reddit, Discord, Steam reviews, and forums. So look into those. Consider them. Regular interaction with your community is one of the most important things. Uh, you're not always going to have news to share with them. You're not always going to be able to be there with the next big announcement. In fact, some of those are often going to be in your marketing team's hands. Uh, and that's a different conversation for a different day about, you know, where's the split and crossover between marketing and community these days? Uh, and for every different team out there, it's probably going to be different. But talk with your community. Have chats with them. Tell them good morning. Show off your pets in the pet channel. It sets the tone. It builds trust. When your advocates have questions, when your, your big community members are asking things, get them the information they need. They're the ones who are going to turn around and keep spreading that information so you don't have to be responding to every question out there often when you have members of your community raising that info and awareness for you. Uh, it humanizes you, it humanizes the, the rest of the development team, and you can often entertain uh, and keep your community engaged even when they're not playing your game. And that keeps them attached to you, that keeps them in your sphere. Uh, because once again, we're talking, how many games are there out there right now? You wanna make sure as often as you can that those people don't just leave your community because they might miss the next big update. They might miss the news that's coming and then they might never return. So, and don't get me wrong, you're gonna lose people over time, it happens, but the more you can do to just keep them engaged, the better. All right, so. I do have room for some questions. Uh, my one rule is that uh, I do need a coffee for every question that is submitted because I lack far too much coffee uh, in my daily life. Uh, so please, please send me coffee. And I do believe we have some questions out there already. So uh, hi, Joe uh, from Player XP. Uh, in fact, I believe Joe is from one of those tools out there for helping to monitor communities. Uh, and that is one that I might recommend people go take a look at. All right, we actually have a question from the, the Discord. Can you describe your approach to fostering player engagement and building a strong sense of community around a specific video game title or franchise? All right, so start early. Um, the earlier you can start building that community, the better. Uh, you do not want to wait for kind of the big announcements late in the game to really start your community building activities. Uh, you want to have a plan from the get go. You want to maintain points of contact with them. You want to make sure that you are gathering up their feedback. You want to make sure that you're like, you're acknowledging that you're like, Hey guys, this is what I'm seeing out there from you. I'm sending this off to the design team or I've, I've left a note for level development, like this is the sort of thing you guys have raised interest in. And make sure like, hey, you're not promising anything, but make sure that they're aware that you are gathering feedback, you are seeing their wants and their needs, and you are trying to source them to the right people so that actionable things can be actioned. Uh, and they will strongly appreciate that. Uh, do things early on to you know maintain growth. Some of those might be games. Some of those might be little more complicated things uh, in tune with marketing. Some of them might be giveaways. It kind of just depends on your approach. Uh, and the right approach for you will be different. 
uh, you're going to experiment with all of them and just lean into the things that seem to be working. Uh, I, I could probably go into more detail there, but kind of, I feel like it requires a bit of a deeper question. So I want to kind of see if I fully answer that to what the person was asking or if I should just, you know, keep rambling for like 30 minutes on this topic. <laughs> You do you. Um, but we'll go ahead and we'll get to the next one. And then if you want to cycle back to that, we're, we're totally okay. for it. All right. So our next one is, what strategies do you employ to gather player feedback effectively and ensure it is communicated to the game development team for possible improvements or updates? All right. So uh, that is pretty much how I start my day uh, and oftentimes how I end my day. Uh, for any title I'm working on, uh, my team has a living document of what we call our top community issues, uh, feedback, and concerns. So it's got things they want to see. It's got their suggestions that we see frequently. Uh, it's got their top pain points of things that are in the game that aren't necessarily bugs, but aren't necessarily a pleasant experience for all of your players. Uh, and it's got your top gameplay impacting bugs. Uh, and even from that point, uh, because that list can grow to be fairly lengthy, even though you're trying to keep it to just the top things, uh, keep a more condensed version of that. Like, hey, here's our top five from each. If I had to, you know, fight for development time to get any of these addressed, these are the ones that I would like the team to consider. Uh, and you're going to have a conversation for the, with the rest of the dev team. And if you're not, set one up. Have that conversation. Say, can we make this happen? How do we have the dev time to tackle any of these? And work with them. They often say, hey, we don't have the dev time for something as complex as request A. But what we do have is this amount of time. And you can go, all right, I have a list of things. Do you think anything on this list can fill that time slot? And that's going to be, uh, as I said, a living document. Uh, but don't be afraid to refresh it. Uh, what our team does is every time we have a major update, we essentially start a clean version of that document. Uh, we make a copy. We leave the old one behind. We start the new one. We take an ax through it off of everything we think we've solved or we've seen the chatter go down on. And we start anew because the community is not static. Uh, when you ship an update, your community's wants and needs are going are definitely going to change. Uh, and they will often change it without an update, and that is something to keep an eye on. And there are often, as I mentioned this earlier, there are some great tools now for sentiment reporting uh, that you might want to look into uh, to help you keep track of all the things and all the spaces. Because you're going to be looking at things like Discord. You're going to be looking at things like forums. Look at your Steam reviews. Look at your Metacritics. Look at why people leave you a negative review. Not all of it is going to be useful. That's kind of a community manager's or a community team's job is to filter through that to actionable items that are legitimate. Um, one way to phrase it uh, is don't necessarily listen to you know an armchair designer in your community that's telling you how to fix your game because they may not know. They may have a brilliant idea. Could go either way. But what they do know for sure is what doesn't feel great to them or what doesn't work for them. So make sure you're documenting that, uh, especially as you have a larger team and you're fighting for development time. Uh, the more data you have, uh, the better to be able to you know, quantify and argue for the time needed to address uh, what you're bringing up to the rest of the team. Fantastic. So we actually have another one. This is from Venter Out on YouTube. I've seen some discords with lots of channels. It's somewhat overwhelming. At what point do you cross over of having too many channels? This is this is a really good question because Discord can be super overwhelming. It, it can be. Uh, and I would mostly agree with that statement uh, after five channels personally. Uh, but realize that it's not just you uh, that's using Discord. It's, it's your fan base. And everybody has their own tolerance for what is too much for them, what is overwhelming. 
Uh, from a community management standpoint, what you want to make sure of is that you have the time and the volunteer moderators to be able to tackle what you've opened up. So consider like, hey, we, we have a large, let's say, French community asking for uh, a French section in our Discord, and that might be awesome. Strongly consider getting a French moderator before you do that so you know that you can maintain the same healthy quality of conversation in all those spaces. Uh, another thing is Discord now has a much better onboarding tool, uh, which we have started using heavily, where you can let, as players come into your Discord, they choose what they want to see. Uh, and you, if you have access to that, and I think that's rolled out to everybody now, uh, so please use that tool. Like say, hey, do you want to see news? Here's announcements. Do you want general chatter about the game? Here's, you know, general chatter. Here's, you know, player discussion about specific things. Uh, do you want the memes channel? Click this button. Do you want the off topic channel? Sure, here's the pets. Here's other games conversation. So heavily use that tool to help your players get the information that they want so it doesn't come off as overwhelming to them. That is great advice. Um, Discord is just constantly implementing new things. And they are just... constantly evolving, and it's something that you have to stay on top of. And this this holds true for any space, uh, and it may hold true for spaces you're not aware of yet that you'll find yourself poking your, around in, uh, is you have to stay on top of it. Figure, once again, figure out where your players are, what they're using, and make sure you're aware of what's coming next with the tools you're already using and what could be waiting in the wings. I've been using Discord for years. And at times I'm like, yeah, I understand everything. And then there'll be something new that pops up. And I'm on Google being like, how do I fix this? Like, what <laughs> is this, this new work? thing? Uh -huh. What is <laughs> like, this new feature this and how does it work? <laughs> exactly. All right. We have another one from the Discord. For teams with limited bandwidth, where should we focus our efforts? So. That's a very important question, um, especially if you have one person or, you know, it's not anybody's dedicated job for this. And that's where it's so good to have a core space that you make sure is healthy and well maintained, because if you can get your players into your space, it is far easier for you to look at the conversations, whether it be, you know, a moderation topic or whether it be hey i'm gathering up feedback i'm looking at bug reports the more you can get them into your core own spaces the easier it is um that being said you are never going to convince your entire audience possibly even a majority to ever come into your core spaces uh, and there are things that are always going to be out of your control but as i said look for where your your core players are gathering and put your efforts there Discord is likely going to be one of the big ones. Uh, Steam discussions are going to be big. Uh, take a look at Steam discussions. Some are well-maintained. Some of them are on fire and have been since they first showed up. Uh, and you can kind of tell the difference between the tone uh, and how those pages are managed. Uh, so pick, pick your one or two uh, to focus on and go all in there. Like, if you don't have time to do Reddit, don't have time to do Reddit. But at the same time, if you have a Reddit community asking for things, try and be there at, to help and assist, uh, even if you aren't actively uh, the biggest participant there. So there are things that you can say, hey, these, these are more uh, assisting light touches where the major focus is on these spaces here. Very good. All right, we have another one from YouTube. Aaron Dean, oftentimes our team needs to prioritize fixes, issues that don't align with what the community wants. What's the best way to drive positive sentiment despite not giving the community what they want? So prioritizing fixes, uh, obviously, something every team has to do. There is limited time. There is limited bandwidth. Uh, and some issues are just need to go away sooner than others. Um, 
it's, it's a fact of game development and you're never going to make everybody happy step one except that somebody will always be upset that you didn't fix their issue you didn't address their concern what you can do is roadmap things you can say hey we have stuff in the pipeline some of it is not going to be available in the next update but we are aware of it we are working on it uh acknowledge that they are in fact you know having concerns and issues acknowledge that you are getting it into the pipeline but it won't be in the next update uh and oftentimes where possible in your patch notes in your designer notes say why things have been tackled why changes were made why certain fixes had to come up uh players often like the openness and clarity don't get me wrong it can have some negative side effects too where things are turned in reverse and used as a possible line to come after uh the community team or the developer depending on what's said uh you are gonna you know get your messaging wrong more than once uh and there is no magical formula to getting it perfect but you can be fairly open about things uh while leaving yourself some wiggle room uh that hey we know this is important to you we're trying to get into the update all right turns out it missed say guys hey this issue proved to be more complex than we were expecting uh it remains a priority issue but it has been pushed to the next major update or whatever the case may be um so players really do like those forms of interaction and it helps keep a more positive connection with those players who, uh even when you're not addressing their top concern with any given update hopefully that drives into the root of your question we have about 10 minutes left we have one more question but before we get to that one i actually have one for you Go ahead. so as a fellow community manager i want to know what would your suggestions be to someone who's considering getting into this field that wants to be a community manager is like really passionate about community like what are your suggestions because i'm always like you gotta have thick skin if you do not have thick skin this is definitely not for you <laughs> that is very true sadly as a community manager you're essentially drawing a target on yourself uh for the bad actors out there uh because you will become any any public face of a game developer will become a target to bad actors who just want to cause problems uh, and as a community manager you will be one of those public faces of the company um so you need to understand what you are getting into try out being a volunteer moderator get involved with a modding project and helping out with a community there uh, know what you're getting yourself into because it's it's a unique experience like every customer facing job has its unique challenges community management especially in the video game world uh is kind of the most unique amount of experiences i have ever had uh in my life let alone my uh, professional career doing things so the more you can and talk to community managers we are often very open to answering people's <laughs> questions especially people who want to get involved in this field uh, i think there's a whole apple tv show uh where somebody asked that question and uh the answer to get back is no you don't want to do this uh and that can be true uh it's arming yourself with the information of what the job is really like and it's an ever-changing job field uh in my years of being a community manager which is getting closer to two decades now which scares me uh it has changed greatly um it went from being just being on like mostly third-party forums who remembers some of those old like planet quake forums and things like that uh to things moving to more to owned social spaces to things moving more towards third party social spaces things like reddit things like discord uh and now a lot of it is involved streaming streaming has become a major thing for a lot of community teams um and that's not a tool set everyone has uh is it something that you're prepared for is it something the job expects of you these are all important questions uh so 
the main thing there is ask the questions, figure out, is this what you want to do and figure out the right niche for you inside of community management, if it is. So pretty much in retrospect, community managers wear numerous hats. <laughs> we don't just sit there and watch like Discord or Reddit or, you know, social media all day. We're literally juggling 60 million things at once and trying to be there for the community and be their advocate and their their voice of reason sometimes when they need it. We will go ahead I, to our last question since we only have about five minutes left. This one is an anonymous ooh. submission. We recently announced a new retroactive pricing model that has not that has not gone over well. Ding ding! This is ringing bells. <laughs> what can we? I do have suspicions. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Unity. Uh, what can we do to get game developers to trust anything we say going forward? So this applies to all community management. Uh, once things go south, once a community relationship goes toxic or combative, um, it it is hard to change. Um, don't get me wrong, it's not impossible, but it's not going to happen overnight. You will spend, you essentially, you, you have burned the bridge of goodwill or the bridge of healthy environment. Uh, it's far easier to burn that down than it is to rebuild that bridge. Uh, it's going to take concrete steps. Uh, it's going to take actions over months and years uh, to try and rebuild that trust. Um, and it's going to be not fun at major moments. Like, hopefully the worst of it happens just the once. Uh, but there will be times when, you know, it's thrown again and again back in your face uh and you need to be prepared for that you need to be able to say once again attempt to de-escalate people who maintain that they are upset and frustrated and angry um and understand that why they still are you are not changing their mind all you can do is say the steps that are happening and follow through and it's, it's going to be slow to rebuild that level of trust. Very, very true. It seems like we have one more question. So we're going to go ahead and pop this up. From the Discord, how often should we be streaming our game to build a community and where should we do it? Everywhere you can. Um, be on Twitch, be it on YouTube, uh, are your two big defaults. Uh, but explore other spaces, definitely, because uh, you might never know where it's going to take off. Uh, look at tools like Restream that lets you stream to multiple locations at once. Uh, it's I, Those sorts of tools are an easy win. We use Restream. Um, so pro tip there. Uh, but how often should you be streaming? That's a more complicated question. Uh, and it's going to change depending on your team and your time available. We try and get various types of streams going around our communities, around big events, uh, leading into them, trying to show off new content before it comes out, uh, trying to show off new content as it comes out. We also try and do community game nights where we're playing with members of our communities in our various games, just chatting with them, just being a fellow, you know, member of that community where we can play the game, chat with them, and overall just try and create a positive vibe and good time. And they understand that, yes, we're playing the same game they are. And the more you can do it, obviously, probably the better you are, but you need to figure out what works for you and your team. Uh, and you need to make sure, you know, it's manageable. Uh, have, like any sort of streaming thing, having more of a schedule often helps. Like, hey, every other Thursday, we're streaming, especially if you're early on, in development builds. Are, and to lean back on something else, it kind of depends on, do you have a full-on marketing plan? Uh, what, what, what is your marketing team? What do, they often want to hold things back uh, as ammo for their big pushes, but you can't hold everything back. You have to talk about something. So you need to decide what's fair game, what isn't. Can you make builds that don't show off the big thing that you know you have to keep secret until next month? Uh, and these are all major questions that you'll constantly be asking 
And sometimes you'll get it wrong because I've totally never streamed a build that had a character of deceiving that hadn't been announced yet that showed up when somebody joined the play tests uh, that hadn't been informed not to play that character. That's totally never happened. Thank you so very much, Jared, for all of your insight and just being here today. We do really appreciate it. Um, next up, we have Tina Mary, and she will be discussing how to lead a cross-cultural team. So make sure you guys are staying tuned for that. And Jared, thank you again so very much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. And hopefully I uh, answered a lot of those questions out there. Uh, and I think I'll be available for perhaps some more uh, on the Discord. Yes. If, if you, you want guys... to go back and forth. Mm -hmm. If you guys have any additional questions for Jared, please feel free to jump in our Discord. His uh, username is Yoshiro. Is that your username? Yeah, uh, that is it. He will be able to sit there and chit chat with you about community management. Um, so yeah, we're going to stop it here. We're going to pass it over to Tina Mary. I am quite sad that no doggos came. I was really hoping the doggos would show up. <laughs> oh, she's beside you. I couldn't see yes. her because your name's in the way. <laughs> Lacey, come here. Oh. Lacey, show everybody your come beautiful here. face real quick. <laughs> she was being a good girl because I told her to go away and be quiet. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so very much. We're going to end here and pass it over to Tina. Have a good one, guys. Bye, everyone. <laughs>